This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. <clears throat> Aloha. Uh, my name is Mitch Yuan. I'm with the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, where I'm the hydrogen systems uh, program manager in my day job. But here in my television career, I'm standing, uh, I co-host uh, the Hawaii, the state of clean energy with Maria Tome, who's uh, out there uh, doing some robotics uh, today. So I'm happy to step in as a senior host. And uh, today, uh, oh, by the way, uh, we're sponsored by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and Think Tech Hawaii. So uh, today we're going to be uh, showcasing some more UH HNEI technology, uh, helping to solve uh, Hawaii's current problems. So uh, what we'd like to do is uh, show what we're doing and how we're relevant to um, society and the, and the taxpaying public to show that we're uh, doing good work in support of uh, Hawaii. So today I'm very uh, happy to have Jim Maskery, who's on the staff of HNEI. And um, we're going to be talking about megawatts. But I'm going to turn it over to Jim, who's going to tell us what he does and all the cool and, quote, hot projects that he's working on at HNEI. So take hot it away, Hot projects. Jim. Hot projects that we make cool. There you okay. go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mitch, and thank you for having me on the show to talk about um, HNEI and a lot of the work that we do, and particularly that a lot of the work that just normally kind of flies under the radar unless we get opportunities like this to come out and talk about it. Um, my, my background is I'm you know, not a formal academic. I've come from a mixture of public and private sector, uh, having worked for architecture and engineering firms as well as for uh, uh, cities and energy management roles and, okay. uh, and even energy startups here in Hawaii. So how long have you been with HNEI? I've been HNEI for about, uh, it's getting close to seven years. Wow. Seven so years. Almost pensionable now. Getting, getting yeah. there. Very Keep good. My fingers crossed. Very good. And so uh, you do energy efficiency programs, and I think uh, you've got some materials, so you have some slides yeah. and a video. So yeah. Uh, let's. Uh, yeah. So what I want to talk about um, today is uh, our uh, a, a number of our projects that we do in energy efficiency, and uh, we've actually got several in that area, and the first one is. Uh, it's called Project Frog, and Project Frog are a series of net zero energy buildings, basically buildings that generate themselves more energy than they consume. They're very high efficient, high technology buildings. Right. And uh, you know, we're, we've constructed five of these in the state, two on Kauai, one out in Eva Beach, and two on the UH Manoa campus. And the, the intent was to demonstrate that you know, we can build low efficient buildings right. that, and we're also using them as classrooms right. as well as research laboratories. So we are actually doing real tests on other types of technologies using those classrooms as the platform. So what students are, are uh, using these classrooms? Are they you know, junior students or are they uh, university students? It's actually both. Um, the morning sessions from 7.30 to 12.30 are uh, being used by the university lab school. Okay. Um, they were, you know, very much in need of space after some of their facilities burnt down a few years ago, and uh, so they're using those two classrooms in the morning, and then in the afternoon it's the College of Education that basically, uh, you know, controls and schedules their classes. Right. There. Okay. And they get used from, you know, from basically 7:30 in the morning to about 8 o'clock at night. Right. So are you, you're going to tell us. Uh, how uh, receptive they are to these classrooms? Is that part of your well? Um, I actually, I will I will let the video speak for itself when we get to it. Great. And the first thing I want to do is just uh, with the the first PowerPoint slide is uh, to show the image of the frogs that we've constructed. So if we've got the PowerPoint. There we go. And the uh, the the top image is of the original three frogs. And FROG is, stands for Flexible Response to Ongoing Growth. And Fro Project FROG is actually a company in San Francisco that has designed and constructed these, uh, these buildings for us. And uh, 
So the Everett building is one that's in Eva Beach as well as two in Kalakini at Kalakini Charter School right. in, uh, in Kauai. The lower one is the second generation frog and that, those two are built on the UH Manila campus. And during the design and construction of the second generation, we pulled a lot of the lessons learned from the first generation right. and have improved the performance actually quite a bit. So these are like prefab buildings, so like a flat pack, like going they're, to IKEA? They're you... flat pack. They're not so much prefabbed as they <laughs> are. Um, they're component based, so all the components are packed and shipped, right. but they're constructed much much like a regular building. Okay. Uh, they, they need a contractor. They need to put all the pieces together correctly. Right. Um, so it's not quite prefab, but it's not quite, uh, you know, build on site. Okay. So, right. so um, at this point, I'd like to just show a brief little video clip right. that was produced by UH uh, on our behalf. And uh, okay. that'll actually speak to some of the features. Okay, great. Thanks. The University of Hawaii at Manoa's College of Education is home to the UH system's first net zero buildings, which will generate more energy than they consume. Like, whoa, this is really cool, this is different, this is something new. The flexible response to ongoing growth, or frog classrooms, are part of a larger research project designed to evaluate the performance and integration of energy technologies, such as energy storage, advanced occupancy sensing, and advanced fan control. They were funded with a grant from the Office of Naval Research and are managed by UH Manoa's Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. The classrooms feature real-time dashboards and high-efficiency LED lighting with adjustable modes and sensors that respond to natural daylight. The walls and ceilings are highly insulated and the windows feature glazing that minimizes heat. The frog buildings are also mixed mode, using natural ventilation to reduce the need for air conditioning. Seeing these in action, demonstrating the principles, demonstrating the concepts that we've been talking about in the energy efficiency field is, uh, is fantastic. And, and these classrooms are actually getting uh, attention internationally. The goal of this pilot project is to learn more about energy efficient building design and operations and apply those lessons at scale to meet the University of Hawaii's goal of becoming net zero or to generate more energy than it consumes by 2035. These net zero classrooms also teach invaluable life lessons. Coming to school here in a building that uses um, energy so wisely is a reminder for me to do my part elsewhere. <laughs> Great. Hey, yeah. great video, Jim. Really Thank cool. You. And you know, uh, we have such a problem in Hawaii at our elementary and high sc middle schools and high schools with uh, heating load for our kids, like they're in, you know, 89, 90 degree uh, temperatures. So this kind of building could be applied if the lessons learned could be applied, you know, from this project. Uh, it would really help out our children. Yeah. Well, we are working with um, the Hawaii Department of Education. Um, on this and they're very aware of the, these buildings and uh, actually a little bit later, later in the show I'll be talking about another project we're doing with uh, Hawaii DOE okay. uh, in terms of helping inform their heat mitigation uh, project. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you know a lot of what we do is collaborate with other entities right. you know, with the School of Architecture, right. with uh, outside consultants, um, with Hawaii Department of Education uh, with a, a, one of our leading consultants is a company called MK Think, right. and uh, and we also have a joint research project with UC Davis with the California Lighting Technology Center out of uh, UC Davis. Right. So we've got a number of collaborative projects which uh, you know I hope to be able to <laughs> cover today. Yeah, There's okay. a lot a lot of ground to cover. Okay, well I'll let you start covering Perfect. it. Then. Okay, um, well one of the um, you know one of the aspects about a mixed mode building is which what these are. It's a combination of natural ventilation and air conditioning. The hope is that when the conditions are right, then the, the users will open the windows, turn on the ceiling fans, likely turn off the lights because there's plenty of daylight in there without the right. lights, and really lower that, that energy footprint. Now when the conditions get warm enough, 
then they've got the opportunity to go and turn on the air conditioner. But we have uh, special air conditioning controls in it. Right. And the control is such that, that when the user wants to use the air conditioning, they go and they, they push a button, right. an override button on the thermostat. Okay. And that turns the unit on for an hour. And then after the hour, it'll shut itself off. The user has to make a conscious decision. You know, is it warm enough in here where I need to turn the air conditioner okay. on again? Now, in a, in a classroom building that, like this where classes change and schedules change every day, it's very good because it really saves a lot of energy. It's not an air conditioner that starts at 7 in the morning, runs till 8 o'clock at night nonstop. Mm -hmm. yeah. It turns off when it's not being used. And uh, different professors, different people in there actually prefer the non-air condition, some prefer it on, some prefer it off. Right. So we really get to save the energy by uh, you know, reducing the HVAC consumption. So that's okay. kind of one of the key technology keys that are, that are in there. Right. Um, and if I might have the, the next slide, there's, uh, you know, there's, a, uh, there's an interaction between equipment, building operation, you know, behavior and perception. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you're going to have different teachers, different professors that respond differently. Now, I just wanted to bring one snapshot of comparison of two, the two classrooms at UH Manoa, side by side, exactly the same time, exactly uh, the same, same period. One professor has very committed to you know, natural ventilation. They turn on, the, they, right. they open the windows, they naturally ventilate. And the other is uh, Professor Blivy who is oblivious to the, the, the concepts that we're trying to <laughs> convey and just turns the air conditioner on when they, when they come in and turn it Keeps off. the button pressed. Keeps yeah. the button pressed. And uh, this is just a, just a visual, a quick visual to show that, that significant difference in energy consumption right. over, over a quarter that we can achieve just by the type of AC control and having them make decisions. So can we educate Professor Blivy? Can we go back to him and say, look, Professor Blivy, look at all the energy you're using compared to Professor Green. I mean, that's, can that's you get your right. act together here? That's actually one of the next steps. You know, okay. it's, a very, it's a delicate balance to not impose our values you know, on the way they right. operate a building. But if we can encourage it through you know, educating them on what the building is about right. and you know, what the intents are, then we may be able to change behavior a little bit. Good. Yeah, yeah well done. So another thing that I wanted to talk about today is, um, you know, there's a saying in technology, you can't manage what you can't measure. And so uh, we, are, we are partnering with uh, MK Think, mm -hmm. who has designed an integrated environmental sensor. It's basically a single sensor that can be deployed in a classroom uh, or, a, or a room. Right. And it will detect humidity, temperature, uh, carbon dioxide levels, mm -hmm. noise. It can actually detect distance from it to objects like people. Really? Yeah. And um, and did I say noise? And I'm illumination. Oh, okay. And and it can be placed in a, into a classroom, and it's remotely tied to the internet. So it basically it will send a, a signal to the internet so that you can pull up live data. So if we can have the PowerPoint again. We've got a, uh, this is the, the sensor, and this is all in a beta prototype uh, stage where you can see it's almost a little bit bigger than a, than a standard sticky note, and it's a uh, 3D printed cage, if you will, really? a decorative wow, cage. Yeah, it looks really uh, yeah, pretty um, neat. You know, it's just to create a little, a little sass to it. And um, so it'll monitor all of these, uh, these metrics. And can I have the next page, please? And then it goes live to a, a dashboard, which will provide you the ability to pull up the graphs and the, on any of the metrics that you choose. So along the right of the choices of metrics, you don't want to put them all on the same time because they have different, yeah. different axes and that. But, uh, but you've got the ability to pull up all that data live real time on a so, dashboard. So quick question, do you have one sensor per room or would you have to deploy more than one to? It depends on what you're looking for. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, if your temperature and humidity, probably one would do it. Um, if you're looking for light and light penetration, then you might 
put a matrix of them up. So what's the status of this technology? Has it been turned into a product yet? Um, what what so, where do you see the timeline before we can actually start installing these? Yeah, we've got four of these uh, beta testing down at the, down at the, the site. Um, and I, I don't know what MK's timeline is on getting these into to production. I know that they're uh, very aggressive in trying to look at get, get test sites, to test them out in the field. Right. Uh, to you know, work the bugs out before they go to market, but I don't have an answer on when, okay. you know, when it's to market. So that's one, one project um, among several that we are working with MK yeah. Think on. Um, what I, I wanted to also discuss, um, let's see where it is, is, um, you know, I had mentioned earlier about the working with the Department of Education. Yes. And MK Think is also contracting with the Department of Education, and they did much of the consulting towards the heat mitigation, trying to determine what can be done at the schools to reduce the temperature. Right. Now, That's like an existing classroom. In the existing yeah. classrooms. Right. So they had to mo they monitored many many classrooms around the state. Yeah. Um, and let's pull up the next PowerPoint slide, please. And this is a this is a snap slide, a screenshot of a thermal comfort portal and basically this is the a DOE portal created by MK Think that HNEI hosts. Okay. And uh, the idea is you're able to select a school down on the left side yeah. and it'll it'll pull up the conditions in various classrooms wow. that, that they have monitored. Yeah. And they have uh, monitored a total of 63 schools in 740 classrooms. Wow, really? And then in addition to the classrooms, they've also got uh, 41 weather st independent weather stations, plus uh, there is a network of weather stations that exists all over the state that they're tied into. Yeah. So this website allows you to look at temperature, humidity in individual classrooms. Yeah. It allows you to, um, to uh, look at the conditions within you know, various classrooms, plus it provides you the weather conditions, and down at the bottom it shows you, that's a, uh, a, a temperature gradient that shows you the approximate temperature conditions over the course of the year. So you can see that so the central. Before we go to break, just one quick question. So can you monitor, like do uh, equipment health monitoring to see how well your air conditioning system, for example, I mean, if it starts, you know, falling apart or getting out of spec, this should be able to give you a trend, yes? Um, the, the, the Hawaii DOE portal wouldn't do that, but the data that we collect could do that. And and with uh, in a persistent review, yeah, yeah you can do that okay. because we we track the energy. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we can go to that break now. This is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world. So caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. We've got to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Take it to bed, so a little more, more than every more, let's do what we can. My name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Okay. So, uh, Jim, just uh, you know, looking at uh, from from our, just before we cut the, to uh, break, I had no idea we were doing that at H and I, <laughs> and uh, this is uh, really relevant to the problems we have today. I mean, we're looking at spending, you know, tens of millions of dollars to uh, retrofit our schools to get the temperature down so our kids can have a better learning environment, and so um, this is very relevant to, you know solving our community's problems like in real time right now it's not like 20 years out kind of uh, research and development it's like right now we can apply it and we can uh, help uh, the states a save money and save the kids uh, you know uh, uncomfortable environment so yeah, exactly well done exactly well great. thank you yeah I'm just getting started yeah okay well okay. carry on <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of our other 
real key projects and, and passions of mine is, is supporting, you know, supporting the future, supporting the, uh, our UH School of Architecture. Okay. The School of Architecture has um, what's called the Environmental Research and Design Lab. Okay. And, uh, you know, we call it ERTL. Um, and we've been supporting it for many years, and they are very much our, our partners in crime in terms of doing research. And okay. um, they, they are, you know, my arms and legs when it comes to conducting research. Right. So they, they're very supportive. And one of the projects that they're working on right now is with the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Mm -hmm. And they have monitored uh, a number of homes out in Kapolei on DHHL properties. They monitored the energy performance of those and then compared those and did simulations to compare those to see what is going to be the impact of future more stringent energy codes that, are, that will be coming. What right. impact will that have on housing design? And I know Howard talks, quite, Howard Wig talks quite mm -hmm. a bit about the new energy standards. Right. And uh, so they've, the, the Ertl has conducted a pretty significant study on what will be the impact on those homes. But I won't be talking too much about the, the homes, I mean the, the, the impact on the standards, but part of uh, the work that they've done is studying what is the impact of energy efficiency on the energy, energy consumption in these homes. So, um, we've got another slide I can like to show. Okay. Oh, we, I'm sorry. This was from the last one. This was from the. This is another screenshot from the Hawaii Department of Education. Okay. So we can go to the next, there next we um, we have slide. We flexibility here. No yeah. problem. We're all friends here. There we go. Okay. This is from the School of Architecture, and it's probably hard to read the fine print here, but this is uh, one of the prototypes that they did the simulation on uh, that reflects one of the homes out in Kapolei, okay. and it's got long overhangs, uh, PV, high-performance glass. You can see the ceiling fans. But so the overhangs provide shade, correct? The overhangs and, provide shade. And, and shield the windows from sunlight coming. Exactly, yeah, sure. exactly. And uh, getting into the, the nuances of the energy code is a whole number another program with Howard. Right. Um, but we'll just skip to the next slide which compares two homes that, that we monitored out there. They're both four bedroom um, homes. They, it's kind of funny enough, they both each a four bedroom home with two occupants. Right. Um, wow. But you can see the significant difference in energy consumption, yeah. one home over another. It's like half. Like, like half. And all, so much has to do with attitudes, user behavior, mm -hmm. um, turning the AC off when you're not there. Um, and you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the habits that are actually hard, hard to break. So how do, how do you uh, change user behavior? Is it by providing a screenshot or like so they can see exactly how they're using their energy as opposed to just not knowing what they're using? Is that, is that how we do that? Well, we, we try to educate, you know, yeah. um, just by uh, letting them know what their options are. Right. Um, the utilities and Hawaii Energy has found that one of the, app, of all of the drivers, whether it's the, the need to do well, to do good, to do the right thing, to save money. Of all the possible drivers out there, the one driver that affects energy decisions the most is knowing how your neighbor has done. Oh, really? No kidding. So, so a little bit of send out in bills, you know, that this is how much you used, yeah. but, you know, you're using 20% more than your neighbor's using, right. you know, and yeah. creating this, this competition. Yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of doing the shortcut version of that, but that is one of the most uh, you know, inter yeah. interesting things we found in a while. So I was reading another study that said, you know, when you start saving money and energy, then people want to buy more electronics because, you know, okay, well, I can pile some more electronics on. So it's kind of like almost self-defeating, but yeah, there's never, the, <laughs> there, you, know, you can't, the human nature, you know. That's, I mean, that's right. That's, it it's a double-edged sword, especially with PV. You know, once you get that PV on there, I'm gonna fire my air conditioner up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, and so, so based on that, um, that DHHL study, there's one more slide I'd like to pull up on that. And this is basically just a short little study that they did to show what the uh, cost reduction was by just, just making an adjustment on your thermostat set point. And you, know, you can go from, from 
you know, in the order of uh, $250 a month down to $84 a month by adjusting the temperature. And each one of those bars represents you know, an adjustment from 72 right. degrees to 76 degrees. The one next to the right is if you were just to, to change the setting while you're away, Monday yeah. through Friday, right. you know, how much can you save? So this is just another visual, a quick uh, snapshot visual right. of the, the types of savings. So with that, I'd like to turn to the to one more collaboration that okay. we're doing, and this is with the University of California at Davis mm -hmm. and the the Navy here in Hawaii. Okay. And uh, this is a a project for what's called adaptive lighting. And if we can have the next slide. So the 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 project is to study adaptive lighting, and adaptive lighting is the concept of you. Can lower your, you can have your exterior lighting at a certain level during, say, prime time. Right. But during the middle of the night, you don't need it full blast. Right. So on examples like this with parking lighting, and then the very next slide is a, the next slide is a parking lot. And you can see that the, the lights are on 100% full all night long. The parking lot is absolutely empty. Yeah. So the notion of adaptive lighting is to reduce the levels of lighting during periods of non-use, right. and then uh, with sensors, uh, motion sensors, be able to detect if there's any activity. So it's going to reduce it down to 50%. It might reduce it all the way down to 20%. Yeah. One of the studies that we're going to be doing with, um, with uh, the, the California Lighting Technology Lab and the Navy is to, and actually Project Frog, we're going to be beta testing on the frogs and then deploying a prototype on Navy facilities that will actually reduce the lighting levels, see how far we can reduce them, right. to see how we can network them such that we aren't getting lights in one area turning on and another area and it just looking like you know visual popcorn. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, determining how much energy savings we can attribute. Now, the, the other benefit there is that it's always also a security feature. Right. That if there is any action, then the, and the whole oh, place lights up like a Christmas tree. Right. You know, uh, somebody can happening. go in and, and yeah. inspect. So yeah. the Navy is very interested from a security standpoint, from an energy standpoint, right. and it's uh, you know, our last collaboration that I've very got good. to talk about. So these are very hot and very cool projects you're working on, Absolutely. Jim. So it's uh, really exciting to see us doing this. I mean, you know, you walk around Hawaii at night, even in the university, and there's all sorts of potential there where we can use these kinds of technologies. So. Well done. Thank you very much, and keep keep it going. Appreciate the opportunity. We love thank, it. Thank you, Mitch. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it.